Satnam, I'm Andy here offering a general reading as always take what resonates and disregard the rest at the time that you receive this um, let's say this message sometimes I think videos find you when you need to hear them and I trust um, in divine timing so at the time I'm recording this there are some transits at play including Chiron so pushing through um, any resistance in the emotional body and any entanglement in previous incarnations in in previous pains that might be in childhood or otherwise um, so pay attention to where that is in your chart and, and where things are at at the time that you see this reading we also have two full moons at the time that I'm recording this and it seems like this lightning bolt effect like I like to think of the moon as illuminating secrets in the dark it's illuminating what has remained hidden um, and with two like hitting us back to back with also the sun at play um, and Leo the Leo energy in there as well Juno is also at play within the month um, and we also have Venus retrograding toward the tail end of the month, Mercury retrograde. So just as I feel like you start to get a handle on, this is where I'm at, and I think I've got things figured out. I feel like there's going to be another shift that caused you to go a little bit deeper, which I think is like sifting through the sand and like one last cleanup, one last purge to really propel you forward on the transit that you choose. Um, and, you know, a couple days ago, I was getting a bit about like trains and like taking the train station at OS because there's a, like a few different like train stations near where I'm at, like taking photographs that just hasn't happened. Um, and at one point, like across the highway, like the road is paved. So even if a, a railroad wanted to come through, it can't, right? Because things have changed. New groundwork has been laid. And so with elevation in your awareness, with the changes in society and the way that we communicate and the way that we receive, um, and with the downloads, how are you like renegotiating the direction to which you choose? And it really feels like yesterday I was talking to someone, they're like, what's going on? <laughs> Is there like a full moon or something? And you know, what came through was just this idea of like diamonds, like pressure builds diamonds. And so what feels like chaos is going to create order. What feels uncomfortable is going to then force you to look at something that you might not have otherwise uh, taken the time to sift through like when you're comfortable you continue to go about your journey as is right all systems go but when things get shaken up like a snow globe it forces you to pause right so everything settles in the process of things settling You've got to kind of deal with the balls floating in the air. You've got to deal with the new foundation to which you choose to build. Like, what do you want to build for yourself? I have a couple of decks out. And um, this week I've seen a lot in nature, like, you know, beetles crossing my path, butterflies, uh, birds just darting in front of the windshield. And, I mean, you can say that's nothing, you can see it's something. And when something like that happens, it's like, where's the emotional body? Where's the thought body? Like what's happening in that time that the divine is saying, pay attention. I think even on, definitely on a walk, um, had a hawk like come through right in front, like really low, right in front of where um, Buddy and I were walking. And I was like, can't ignore it, right? Um, also that same day, um there was a black snake like in the parking lot of food line like uh crawling away from it like, you can't ignore it the divine is saying pay attention you prayed you prayed for support now the divine is saying here here's the book here's your checklist like you had a checklist in mind with your prayer right that allowed you like this manifestation you wanted this dream that you had, this desire, this wish fulfillment, and the divine is saying, okay, I can't do it for you. You have free will, 
um, let me show you what you need to know so that you can make the choice for yourself right make the choice for yourself and one deck i haven't used in a while that called out uh, was the Astro deck. And to me, this is like, this deck kind of says like, are things falling apart? Are they coming together? Yes and no, like, yes, yes and. Like, what feels like it's falling apart, like if the infrastructure is not laid, if the grounds are not laid on, like with integrity, with truth, if it's not built on solid grounds, and when I say solid ground, I'm saying integrity, truth, love, um, for the greatest good, then it's going to fall apart, right? If something needs to be relayed for you to build in that foundation in new harmony, new partnerships, it's going to shift and then allow you to realign, right? So think of the nervous system. The nervous system will wire and rewire. While the network for communication might change, you can lay new groundwork for a new path, right? Whether we're talking nervous system, whether we're talking like a fork in the road um, or some other divine way of being, it does feel like I was having another conversation and it, this feels important. And she's like, I'm doing some core cleaning. I'm doing some cleansing. Beautiful. So then your energy is not sucked into this other place that no longer serves and that frees you up to then move forward and use your heart in a way that serves you like sun, i'm taking the sun card so the energy pushing you forward rather than i'm seeing like the death card that march of like dragging you back so you're by cutting those cords you're allowing that to rest like composting that energy to then allow yourself to grow let's see I'm just saying if there's anything else. Forward momentum trajectory is going to move faster depending on the choices you make. Now, uh, Cole and I have talked about galactic mission, soul mission, and then you kind of have like your, your human path. And I also want to say human pacifying energy, right? So you kind of have like this foundation um, that was given to you at birth, right? And so you can kind of pacify yourself with what you've received and just kind of stay stagnant in that energy. And that's fine. That's fine. Right. That's fine. Um, and if you choose to renegotiate those terms and saying, instead of pacifying myself, I'm, I'm going to take it to the next level, then you will move at that speed to which you align to. Right. And if you say, okay, well, I'm going to level up and follow my heart, follow my soul, then you're going to move at that speed. Now, if you say, okay, my heart says this, and I feel this, right? They understand there's even a higher calling. I'm going to listen to God on this, and then you're going to move at that speed. Speaking of death card. That's the king of swords upside down. So I'm going to say letting the thoughts rest the thoughts that actually like hinder you right so we have those thoughts in our mind like we have the way that we speak to ourselves in which we kind of like tear ourselves apart and that's probably part of the pacifying energy right and it's that which you're choosing to let go of and i'm kind of seeing that image of like the human in full spectrum right kind of like that naked and afraid do it anyway like this is like this energy is not going to hold me back Renegotiate what you allow for yourself. There's wisdom within you and sometimes you like shut it down and you're like, mm, not today. <laughs> I don't know that, like not today. I would say, like, I think of like New Year's Eve, uh, like the energy of the holidays where you're like indulging, right? Because everybody would, like all the holidays are around food, right? It's sort of like having that cheesecake, we're having that pumpkin pie, we're having that pecan pie that's, oh my gosh, ever so sweet, right? 
And so the way of eating healthy and taking care of ourselves is not today. We set a calendar date that, you know, starting January 1st, we're going to start X, Y, Z. Well, the divine is kind of pushing you and going with these two full moon thing today. Hazards. Week. How has the divine shown you to slow down and choose a new direction for your own protection? So think of redirection as God's protection. So when things aren't working out continuously, it's God saying, pay attention. Pay attention. So like pre preventing such in a sense for wands celebrating energy like sometimes like you know life of the party is is fantastic if you want to live in the ego right but perhaps you deserve better than that and so you have a choice and rather than split yourself into going okay well my ego is functions in this way. There is something you could have learned in the process of like being that life of the party. For example, think of street smart. So rather than chastising the shadow self, the street self, like the street smart within you, right? Um, seeing the yin and yang, like a lot of times, like we, we think like holier than thou, right? But there took a it takes us a while to get there. Sometimes you have to party before you realize, okay, well, one glass is enough for me, right? Or I'm not going in that direction again. So, but that part of you is still within you, right? The way, the foundation in which you were born, the family you were born into is still part of you. The way that you played is still part of you. And yet there's this other part of you that says, hey, let's, uh, um, let's level up. And so these two parts of the self need to come together, right? They need to come together to then allow you to be whole on all levels and move forward. So the same parts of ourselves that feel like there's this book I bought at an antique shop and it was uh, Be Glad You're Neurotic is the title. So it's like the parts of yourself that are a little not uh, neurotic and perhaps outdated are still parts that you can revisit and wire into the current self as a tool. So there are times when we're met with an energy. You're like, I've been here before. You've probably heard me say, I've been here before, but I can't remember if it was because it was the right way to go or the way in which mm, I don't want to go here again, right? And it's like the divine meets you where you're at. When we have divine intervention, divine communication, the divine works with symbols, understandings, emotions, frequencies to which you're familiar with. That's why it feels like such a crossroad where there's this a sense of uncertainty, right? And so they work with what you already know, but at this new level of understanding, where you're at now, look at it from that place of understanding while recognizing where you once were right they're not going to well my my uh my guys give me words i don't know and i have to like look them up <laughs> like i don't know what that word quite means enough to translate it and when we think about intuition when we think about divine communication it's bypassing the mental body and yet we use the mental body we use words phrases and human language to then translate correct and choose the direction to which we operate based on that understanding. But the divine comes in so quickly that it requires us to be present and translate a multitude of language. And let's think of intuition as another language, embodiment as another language, right? And so then you have to translate it into human understanding. And it requires you to look in the past. They use your past as a reference. And then the past understanding then kind of gets spinned for you to then see it in new light based on the quick download they provide to you. The same things that feel like pitfalls are also growth points of understanding. 
what feels like a backlash can then, should you choose to rewire the way in which you perceive and proceed, can propel you forward. Like noted, moving on. All right, uh, eight of hazards, independence. So, okay. <laughs> I kind of give me the sense of like ink blot. Ink blot. And there's a way in which humans categorize, okay? There's a way in which Jung understood the human incarnation, right? With archetypes. There's a way in which Freud understood the brain and sexual uh, activity. I'm going to use that word. Uh, not, um, sexuality, uh, one way, right? And then there's another way in which, for example, Brene Brown talks about shame. There's another way in which the lotus rooted deeper in understanding, right? And humans kind of implanted that as you kind of toil in and you grow, right? But the way in which the blossom unfolds is different. And so you become your own strategic opportunity. You decide the way in which your network operates. And so it's kind of like you in, I'm seeing kind of like all these dials. It's kind of like you working with your guides to go, okay, this program we no longer want to run this way. Okay, this program I understand that, thanks. Let's keep going this way. Um, and another way I can kind of explain that, it's like your life experience is your own experiment. And so if we think about like you might hypothesize hypothesize things one way, like X, Y, Z is then going to make X, Y, Z. Well, you might find it doesn't play out exactly that way, or your guides might give you another level of understanding or the way in which it plays out goes, oh, I never thought of it that way. And so can you dial in and just like go with the flow enough to go, wow, life could be a joy ride. <laughs> <laughs> the moon is illuminating going careful careful enjoy everything you have here on planet earth but stop hurting yourself in the process all right there's some other cards over here did we go through that so what are you going to let go of so that you can reach higher. And yet some of this might be like, you know, your skeletons in the closet. Sift through that. You're in charge to, in, in this planetary alignment. It's no longer a surprise, right? Because you made the choice. It's never, it's not a split of you. Because you made the choice to go in. And you're no longer hurting yourself because you made the choice. You made the choice. And so you're mastering parts of you. still laugh at myself that the zombie tire is the one I use the most. Because it's, I mean, it's not pretty. Sometimes life's not pretty. The emotional body isn't pretty. The way in which we respond isn't always pretty. And yet here we are. Are you going to be a victim within yourself? Or are you going to retrain the way in which you see and believe yourself to be? 
So letting something rest in the mental body. Getting the words cutthroat. And apologizing to yourself for what you allowed in the past, apologizing yourself, what you continue, what pains you continue to play out, right? You get to choose who's at your dinner table. You get to choose what's on your plate. What are you serving yourself up? What did you serve yourself up? Let's look at this. And will you serve yourself up a cup of love? All right. Last. I picked this deck up. I don't use this one too much because I saw so many animals. <laughs> I did see a, a dragonfly the other day. I left it sitting there because it was still alive. But after it passed, I can put it aside. I might put that in some resin, but I keep saying I'm not going to deal with resin. Those of you who are artists and work with resin, oh my goodness, it takes so much. There's a hawk. The hawk sees from above. I'm hearing like strangers in the night. How are you functioning within yourself or with others like strangers in the night? And how can you tune in to see the perspective from above? That heart to heart, we're all the same. I'm going to just see. <laughs> I've seen a lot of frogs lately. Like the other day I was walking and it touched my leg. I didn't scream, but I was like, oh. What is that? And it's funny when he walks to the park or walks in the driveway, I'm like, so many frogs like squished in the car. What does a frog represent? Like this fairy tale, right? That you're just gonna find your prince. But if you're like chained to your past circumstance, fairy tale or otherwise, how can you relive in this moment here and now not from the past but independent of a fairy tale to see to see that perhaps you don't need a, a frog or you don't need to transform I heard some of the floor let's see what that is Bats are in the cave, right? And they can come pouring out when there's light. And so then we get scared. So when we finally like un unleash, like if we've like suppressed and pushed down and pushed down, I'm not gonna look at this, I'm not gonna look at that. We're constantly fighting, fighting, fighting ourselves, right? Pushing it down. There's parts of ourselves, there's a part of you that knows, hey, pay attention, pay attention, right? There's another part of you goes, no, I'm going to keep beating myself up. I'm going to keep beating myself up, <laughs> right? And so the bat kind of operates in this way. It's quiet in the dark until there's the light, right? And, and for some reason, we're afraid of bats. Well, there's some good things about bats, right? They make a little bat house outside. They're going to eat the mosquitoes for you, right? And so learning, again, to work with parts of the self, Learning to work with parts of the self, of what needs to be unleashed, what needs to be recognized, and how to work with it so that you're not beating yourself up, but loving yourself. And a lot of times that means the next fun deck, clarity, means in your next fun deck. Oh my gosh, there's the three aces. Passions next. Eight is, like, no joke. Eight, that's your dreams so walking towards your dreams what is your passion what is your wish fulfillment if you could like wave a magic wand and say god i'm ready my free will i'm tuning into my free will i'm ready for this what are they going to give you the four of hearts is like something new in the emotional body coming through to you it's like the next step of this ace of hearts delivered to you someone knocking on your door. I think of getting like a Valentine in the mail, right? Well, then you're like, well, my emotional body wasn't quite ready for this. I didn't know I was going to get this. Right? And so you got to sort through the three of hearts is usually kind of 
I think of it as like celebration, but a lot of readers think of that as like third party energy, right? So something might, you know, if, if you're holding on to other humans, you might need to release them. Even if it's just an emotional body and they're not physically entangled with it, or if you're like married to work instead of making room for a relationship, something might need to change, right? If you're busy pouting about the past and you're not looking at what this new fresh cup of love is for you, then you need to renegotiate that. The Ace of Spades is the delivery of the truth. And as long as it's kept in the dark, everything's quiet and still. And then our moon illuminates in the dark. The stars shine in the dark to say, hey, let's look at this. Okay. <laughs> well, I think we're done. <laughs> Sending lots of love away. <laughs>